أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم اجعل جمعنا هذا جمعا مرحوما واجعل التفرق بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تدع فينا شقيا ولا محروما In the name of Allah سبحانه وتعالى the most compassionate the most merciful all praise and thanks are due to him and peace and blessings be upon his beloved prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم he who is guided by the will of Allah, no one can misguide him. And he who is misguided, no one can guide him except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today, inshallah, will be our last session before Ramadan. After Ramadan, immediately an Eid, of course, inshallah. It depends on the days. After the Eid, we will continue, inshallah. By the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have... Uh, 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 done 32 sessions we started on the 6th of July 2021 so exactly eight months and a half exactly so we were not able to do it twice the rest exact eight months 32 sessions alhamdulillah so now what I'm planning to do the majority of you you were with us most of the time or all the time maybe a small number, they will not be able to attend some. So what I'm planning to do, I will go through very quickly the most important points we highlighted, inshallah, the last 32 sessions in the past eight months. So it's like a summary, review, we will sum up, we will wrap up, okay, highlight the most important points. Those who were focusing I believe they will get a high benefit because I will refresh their memory. I will fix the information in case if you missed something, especially those who write notes, it will be, inshallah, of a great benefit. Those who were not with us, at least you will have an idea what we were talking <laughs> about. So both groups after Ramadan and Eid, inshallah, we will be, inshallah, having more enthusiasm to <laughs> continue, inshallah, session 33. Okay? Type. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. At the beginning, I had some kind of uh, introductions. If you remember, uh, one, I will be picking and choosing one of the most important uh, points from each session. <laughs> First session, I gave you an idea about the concept of tawatur. And I told you, you need to fix in your mind. <laughs> This book, the Quran, has reached us through what we call At-Tawatur. At-Tawatur is a special Islamic terminology. Means, means we have received this book through the tra a, a transmissional way in which makes us sure 100% and certain 100% as if we have witnessed this by our own eyes. We explained how, when, why. If you are interested to know the concept of Tawatur and how important it is for your faith and belief, okay? You need to go to see the details. Because when you believe in this book, you need to have an idea about how it was transformed, transmitted, how it was conveyed through hundreds of years. This is called Tawatur. If you want to know, go and listen to the concept of at Tawatur, okay? This was one of the most important things we did eight months ago. Then we moved through another concept. I gave you a very quick idea about the concept of Naskhul Mushaf wa Nusakhil Mushaf. If you remember, this, the most important point at that session was actually the point it was raised mainly by Christian missionaries and by Orientalists, Jewish and Christians mostly, because we have like a, a clash of interests who has the right to claim that his book is the most pure, untouched, unchanged, uncorrupted. In the context of the comparative studies between texts and scriptures, we come to the concept in which our Egyptian brothers say, You know, don't try to claim that you are better than me. We as Jews and Christians, yes, we have a problem in our scriptures. However, <laughs> you are not better than us. 
and they highlight, this is a big shubha by the way, and it's used high, in a, the, the high degree. They talk about what we call, how this mushaf became to be a mushaf. And they intentionally, some of them, try to close their eyes that we, focus now, we Muslims, we do not depend basically in the acceptance of this book on the written form. We depend on the oral transmission, tawatural lafzi. Hundreds, then thousands, then millions and millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of Muslims, they reserved by the will of Allah orally. The written form has another story. It was reserved, but our dependence is not on the written form. It's on the oral form. Okay? Keep this in your mind. However, I gave you a quick idea in that session about how and I replied about the problem that they refer in some of the historical things that Uthman radiallahu anhu burned the other masahif which was containing big mistakes about the Quran. Do you remember? And I told you about this simply everything was preserved. However, the most important point at a certain point thousands then hundreds of thousands then millions get to embrace Islam from non Arabs in specific. Arabs, they had no problem with the, the pronunciation of the Arabic language of the Quran. Non-Arabs, it's a common sense. A non-Arab, for example, non-English speaker at the very beginning of speaking English, <laughs> does he or she make mistakes or not? Yeah. Especially uh, Arab, what, what do we say? Please give me one Pepsi uh, to do my project. Do you have a paper? <laughs> we make mistakes. Our Egyptian brothers, this is this something. The same Assyrians, everyone has a problem. <laughs> we, it's, it's very common. The same thing, the non-Arabs, when they're, when they're encountered with Arabic language, they make mistakes. On top of that, the Walazzalin instead of Walazzalin. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen instead of Alhamdu or Alhamdu or something in between. <laughs> okay? Thalika Zalika. Walad Dalin, Walad Dalin, Walad Dalin, Walad Dalin. And, and, and you know, we have my, so some non Arabs, which is a common sense for their own copies, they write, started to write something for their own just to memorize. So they wrote it in a with mistakes, because this is how they pronounce. So at a certain point, Uthman, from political point of view, from management point of view, while the Quran already is reserved, and millions they memorized right, and they know the copy, he commanded politically as the big chief, as the big boss, as the Khalifa of Muslims, anyone who has any other copy, other than the correct written copies that we have, and we will provide you to copy your own from ours, burn it. This is the story. While millions already preserving it by the original language. You need to know that. While you need to know, for example, from academic point of view, do you believe or not that Christians on earth, they do not have a consensus what was the language that Jesus Christ preached the gospel? I repeat, I'm not saying they do not have a general view. I'm saying there is no consensus what was the language. Why? Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, as an example to compare. He was born as a Jew. He was a Jewish person by birth. True or false? Type. What is the language of the Jews? Hebrew. Yes, that's true. Jazakallah khair, mashallah. Hebrew, yes. They were living as a biggest minority within Roman Empire. In the place where they used to live, which is Palestine now, at that time, the most common local language was the Aramaic. Al-Lugha <laughs> Al-Aramiya. Okay? So, the possibility of talking is up to now what? 
It's either Aramea or Aramaic or Hebrew. Plus, they were living within the Roman occupation. The official language of Romans was Latin. MashaAllah, who's speaking? MashaAllah. How old are you? MashaAllah, Alek. MashaAllah. Yes, the Latin language, the official. Tayyip. Romans, they have just seized the land after they kicked out Greek. Still thousands and hundreds of people in the land still using Greek. Greek language. So at the time of Jesus Christ, historically, it was a proven that four living language all together, like, like French and English in Quebec. Latin. Greek, Hebrew. Aramaic, Hebrew. <laughs> so, in theory, he was supposed to speak Arami or Hebrew. Now, logically, he was supposed to speak Hebrew because he's a Jew. But according to the faith of Christians, he was supposed to be universal. So, he was supposed to address the people with what? With Aramaic. <laughs> Anyway, do you know that they have dispute? Plus, plus, to the best of my knowledge, the oldest copy of the Bible, especially the New Testament, to Jesus Christ is five, between four to five hundred years after Jesus Christ. In Greek. I mean, I'm just giving you an idea. When someone has a problem, and comes to you, okay, I don't blame them. Yani, and it's not my problem what they face. It's their problem, okay? <laughs> I'm not here to solve their problem. I'm just telling you, we are living in a biggest environment, academic, I'm speaking from academic point of view. You need to know when someone comes to you, he has a problem with his book. It's not necessarily the fact that he, she, they have a problem with his book, that this is applicable exactly on your book you have a unique history with a unique style of preservation for your book clear we did that in the first three sessions eight months ago okay i'm not repeating everything by the way i'm just giving you it's like a reminder about what we have done in if you are interested go to you have more than one option option number one dar foundation youtube channel option two Brother Naim Banat, N dot Banat, B A N A T, YouTube channel, full sessions. Option three, my YouTube and Facebook, Dr. Amjad Korsha. So you can go and search wherever, see step by step what we have done. Then we move to another point. After that, you can tell I have just passed 15 pages now, okay? <laughs> now, after that, we started with the Quran with Al Isti'adha. A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitan Al Rajim. And we highlighted the concept of seeking refuge by Allah. If you are a believer, you believe in this book, you need that. This is the cave of haven for all of us under the protection of Allah. <laughs> so the first thing we start A'udhu Billah. Not a'udhu by myself. Not a'udhu because what's the meaning of a'udhu? al wa atlubu al I seek refuge. I'm asking the refuge, al luju Okay? By other people, it's their problem. Some people, they seek refuge with their countries, with their tribes, with their parents, with whatever. As a believer, if you want to seek refuge, tatlub luju, protection, backing, help by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We highlighted this. Then we <coughs> moved to, I'm skipping a lot of things, because 32 sessions. Then we talk about Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. By the name of Allah, we start everything. And we highlighted many hadith about كل أمر ذي بال لا يبدأ فيه بسم الله فهو أبتر أو أقطع. One of the most famous hadith. Anything you start without the name of Allah سبحانه وتعالى, 
it is aptar. It's uh, as if it's cut from the middle. Metaphorically means it's not complete. Still, it needs the barakah. <laughs> it need you need. Okay. أعوذ بالله من شيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. Then after that, we started to talk about Surah Al Fatiha. Surah Al Fatiha. I think it took from us maybe two or three sessions, if you remember. Contains an amazing, amazing, very powerful meaning because. Surah Al-Fatiha, apart from everything, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave this chapter's very specific status. وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَاكَ سَبَعًا مِنَ الْمَثَانِي Do you remember? We have given you seventh methani, which means seven verses, which is Al-Fatiha. Methani, which means the thing that you keep repeating. Allah is bestowing His blessings, His favor upon Muhammad by telling him, Al-Fatiha is one of the most important I have given to you to be repeated. Mathani, to thanna, which means keep repeat, keep repeat. Practically, the only part of the Quran that it's compulsory upon us to repeat it minimum a day, 17 times, minimum. By praying the five times. Two, four, 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 three, four, equal. 17. So Al-Fatiha, it's a compulsory, the minimum. So if you pray Al-Rawatib Sunan, which is 10 rak'at, 17 plus 10, 27, which is the average. If you want to pray the duha and to do at least two rak'at qiyam, two rak'at tahajjud, you will be reading Al-Fatiha, an average of 35 times a day. Which is not, not, not applicable in any part of the <laughs> Quran. So Al-Fatiha has a special secrets. And it starts with Alhamdu Lillahi. Rabbil Alameen. You need to know all praise and thanks exclusively should be just directed to Allah. If you miss this point, you might be on the edge of delving into the area of shirk. Because, because attributing alhamd to someone else than Allah, before Allah, like Allah, above Allah, it's an act of shirk. <laughs> And it contains a lot, a lot, a lot of messages. Then we moved to the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah. The first thing, Alif Lam, <laughs> Mim. We opened the file of Al-I'jaz al qurani <laughs> Do you remember this term? We believe that Quran is mu'jiz, miraculous. It contains an aspect of miracles. طب, how? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala challenged the kuffar of Mecca tens of times. They were not able. We, we, we might think by them it's, it's an easy thing. No. Let just let me remind you of something. Can you ever imagine someone composing and writing as a great writer? writing for 23 years starting from his being a young man in the age of 20 he kept on writing novels stories short stories big novels plays up to the age of 43 45 can you imagine for example 100 famous novels same style same power no mistakes, no problems. Whatever, whoever, whenever reviewed his book for a quarter century, they could not even find one simple mistake, contradiction for a information, scientific, historical contradictions, missing a point, a word, not if 23 years, can you imagine this? This is not my point, but it contains a lot of signs. But we believe in that, okay? Now in this age, for the majority of you, except those who are interested to be specialists in Arabic language, 
One of the best aspects of the miraculous aspects of the Quran is the scientific one. Just fix this in your mind. Quran basically consists of 114 chapters. 6,000 and around 400 or 300 verses. 93, 94,000 words. This 6,000 plus verses contains 1,000 verse. Each verse contains an indication or, the, or a direct information on, on what we now call applied science. 1,000. No one since tens of years, I will not say hundreds, just tens of years since we started to have the high recent sciences, discoveries, you know, in physics, in math, in biology, in chemistry, whatever. No one was able to find one contradiction between a verse in the Quran about such and such X scientific fact and the scientific fact now. What's this? How come for someone who was born in the desert 1400 years ago to bring this? And if you remember, I repeated maybe 10 times, Richard Varley, just keep this in your mind, just not to be, you know, just brainwashed or something. Richard Varley, it's an excellent example of out the 3000, this policeman, colonel, in the British uh, special unit, uh, uh, which is the special unit, uh, the anti-terrorism you know, unit in the British uh, police 30 years ago. When he became a Muslim, when he read the Quran through the three verses, one of them was Sama abnaynaha bi aydi wa inna lamusi'oon. The verily indeed we have built heavens with might and still we are expanding it. And the other one, أَوَلَمْ يَرَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَنَّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ كَانَتَا رَتْقًا فَفَتَّقْنَاهُمَا وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ حَيْ Have not the non-believers witnessed that heavens and earth, they were one mass and we split them into pieces? This refers to Big Bang Theory. The first one, وَالسَّمَاءَ بَنَيْنَاهَا بِأَيْدِ We are expanding, refers to what? Richard Habel. 100 years ago discovered about the expansion of the universe and Allah said and we are still expanding now anyone has to do anything with the science of physics theoretical physics knows that the the speed of the expansion of the universe is the light speed how did Muhammad know that and the last one have we not made the earth as smooth and easy and we made the mountains like widges and pegs inside it? His major was geology and physics. He said, I mean, we have just discovered this just a few decades ago. Just, he said, just, by the way, he said that in 1989. Just early 60s, to the best of my memory, they discovered that when you have a, like a, a cross, uh, uh, cross-section, cross -section. Zakallah khair. You know, in a cross-section, he said, we have just discovered recently, 30 years ago, early 60s, that when you have a cross-section for the mountains, you will discover that just the tip of the mountain on the top of the surface and the majority of the mountain goes inside up to the lava. But please, you tell me, how did Muhammad know that? <laughs> how did? I mean, by the way, don't waste your time to justify why, when, how. You ask anyone who has a doubt. Simply, simply, just take a rest and put rijal ala rijal, you know, I say, hey, mister, hey, missus, miss, miss, whoever you are, come, 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 come. You don't believe? You give me an answer. If you don't believe, give me a justification. How did Muhammad mention these things? If you don't have an answer, please, I urge you to consider it. Or be aware that 
neglecting, rejecting this book with this big evidence against you will be a hujja, an argument against you in the day of judgment when you stand before your Lord. Hey, my slave, Allah, God will ask you, have I not sent to your fitra, your aql, your knowledge that this book is impossible to be from anyone but from a divine source? What did you do with that? He can't escape. I mean, you give me an answer. <laughs> Can you prove? Do you have any evidence that any group of people on earth have this science in any book? Do you bring it? No problem. Bring it. <laughs> and I will, I, will, I will declare my kufr. No problem. <laughs> you do it. <laughs> Can you? And by the way, this is a Quranic methodology that, that I'm ready to challenge someone. You know what it is? قُلْ إِنْ كَانَ لِلْرَحْمَانِ وَلَدْ فَأَنَا أَوَلُ الْعَابِدِينَ What's this? If I worship, if I worship a man, am I committing kufr or not? Yes. طب Allah taught Prophet Muhammad to say قُلْ إِنْ كَانَ لِلْرَحْمَانِ وَلَدْ فَأَنَا He said, tell them a Muhammad, if you can prove to me that Almighty God with His greatness, with His majesty is in need for a son to send a message, I, Muhammad, will be the first worshiper for this son. This applies on many, including Christians and the people of Mecca. You know, some kuffar of Mecca, they used to claim that the angels are the daughters of God. Yes. We have some people, they say the son of God, and we have people, they claim the daughter of God. All of them, they are making a big mistake. They are in, in, in our faith, they are insulting God because God is perfect. He is not in need for a wife or a son or <laughs> a daughter or, or any need. And this is the meaning of as-samad. قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ Do you know? Hadith Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Prophet Muhammad, he said, مَنْ قَرَأَ قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ ثَلَاثَ مَرَّاتٍ فِي لَيْلَتِهِ قَبْلَ النَّوْمِ وَكَأَنَّهُ قَرَأَ الْقُرْآنَ كُلَّهُ If you read قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ three times as if you have recited the full Quran. طب what is the secret of قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ The monotheism, the tawheed. What is the first word? قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ اللَّهُ الصَّمَدْ الصَّمَدْ in Arabic القَائِمُ بِذَاتِهِ غَيْرُ الْمُحْتَاجِ لِغَيْرِهِ this is the core point of comparison between the divine Allah and the creation. Allah is Samad. What's Samad? He is alone and he is able to do everything by himself. He's not in need to anything, anyone to stay or to do. He's, he needs no one. <laughs> Self? مكتفي بذاته يعني اه سيلف سفيشنت جزاك الله خير وايل ايفري وان ايلس ايفريثينج ايلس ان ذا يونيفيرس از بيست باي كرييشن باي ديفولت اون نيد فور سمثينج ايلس اند ذيس از وات كولد ديفكت بوينتس ويكنس بوينتس مخلوق يو ريمبر سو ذيس وان اي مين اي جيف يو جاست ان ايديا ابوت هاو ات هايلايتد ان وين وي توكت ابوت الاعجاز هاوفر الف لام ميم الون وي تولد يو وان اوف ذا موست فيموس بوينتس ابوت ات you can find some people they say Allahu Alam Muradih. I personally I follow the group of ulama who say this is not acceptable. When you say Allah knows what does it mean? <laughs> What's the point of Allah sending something just to say Allah knows what does it mean? Why why, why he's revealing this? One of the greatest explanation for Alif Lam Mim, Kaf Ha Ya Ain Sad, Ya Sin, Qaf. Okay, one of the greatest explanation by a big number of scholars that it came for tahaddi, for challenge, which means you Arabs, you claim you are the best in your rhetorical language and you understand the style of the Arabic. This Quran came from the letters that use your language. Kaf ha ya sad from your language. We are not creating, we are not inventing new sounds, new letters, new language. Or otherwise, how come I'm challenging you? Imagine that, is there anyone in this hall who speaks perfectly and mastering the skills of Chinese? Anyone here in this hall? Type. Can I challenge you if I spoke Chinese with you? Imagine you don't understand that I came, I don't speak Chinese, but imagine that I'm speaking, blah, 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 something, okay. You know, you can't speak, like, you can't answer. I don't understand, Aslan. <laughs> you can't challenge me. But imagine, imagine, 
as you know, you know, I'm this country just since three years. Imagine that you are all were born in this country. And all of you, you have master's degree and PhD in English literature. You. And some of you, some of you, you speak perfectly Shakespeare's language. Thy, thee, though, though, you know, the story. Okay? So all of you born in Canada, all of you masters plus PhD English literature, and I am just a simple Arab who has just come to this country three years ago, and when I came, I was above 50, and I started, I started educating myself with English. Imagine that I'm in front of you now speaking with you with Shakespeare's language with words from the English dictionary. None of you is able to understand it. Am I challenging you or not? Am I able really, really to shake your confidence in what you have or not? Yes. This is exactly what Prophet Muhammad <laughs> did. He was challenging those who master, you know, the skills of the language. So part of it, Alif Lam Mim. Okay, Alif is from your language, Mr. Arab, <laughs> Mr. Abu Jahl, <laughs> Mr. Hisham al Hakam. <laughs> Come on, yalla, do like it. You claim that he's a liar, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. You claim that Muhammad was lying, fadl, yalla. Compose like it, speak. Yalla, bring the knowledge, compose it in this very efficient, powerful style. Do it with all of the, none of them were able to do it, none of them. So just an idea. You remember all of these meanings when we highlight Alif Lam? Mim. Type. <coughs> if you remember, after that, we highlighted how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, started speaking about <coughs> Alif Lam ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى لل مت Taqeen, Ya Allah, we have just... Ah, it's our rubah, okay. Hudan lil muttaqeen. If you remember, Allah clearly in the first page and half, He divided humanity into two, ma two main <laughs> categories. This division, this classification, is it mine? Is it Muhammad's? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Is it? Is it the Arab of Al Madina? It's the decision of who? Allah. Allah. You didn't understand. Allah is telling you that people in general, in terms of their attitude towards Allah, they are believers and non believers. So please don't keep dealing with the concept of Al Muzawada. Abu Abu Ahmad, show Muzawada in English. مزاودة مين فهم المزاودة أصلا؟ الأردنية والفلسطينية شو يعني مزاودة بالإنجليزي؟ إيش آه إيش معاها بالعربي يا حبيبي؟ عشان ترجمة ما هو أنا أنا والله مش عارف أشرحها بالعربي ها هي هيك زي ما هي بلوك مزاودة ما أعرفش أنا المشكلة يلا الأردنية والفلسطينية تفضحوا ناس بسرعة واحد فيكم يحكي لما نحكي لواحد لا تزود علي يعني don't try to act as if you are doing better than me I'm doing nothing مزاودة ها don't be extra ها آه ما هو المزاودة بتروح على المزاودة تبع المزاد العلني لا لا مزاودة باللهجة الأردنية Don't up. Up one. One up. Exceed. One up or exceed. I mean, I mean, why I'm saying that? Some people, because of many political, social media factors, they wanted to be acting as if they are more merciful than Allah Himself. This is called muzawada, which means I act as if I have mercy better than Allah. Allah, the creator, the most merciful, is telling you, I created you, I gave you all means 
to understand, to realize, I want you to obey me. When you disobey me, you are classified as a non-believer and as a rude person, I, I will punish you. Some people, they come and say, no, 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 no. We must love everyone and everyone is nice. Everyone is nice. Yeah, Iblis nice. Mathalan. Yeah, Ammi, as long as Iblis did not do anything for me, why should I have bad feelings towards him? Tayyib, as long as Iblis did something bad against your Lord, should it make any kind of difference in your feelings? No, 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 no. As long as he does not hurt me personally. Which means I have decided indirectly to make my ego, myself, as the center of the universe, not Allah. I'm not joking. Because the concept, as long as he does not hurt me. What? But he is rude with your Lord, Mr. Iblis. Got my point? Anyway, Allah, just to remind you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us we have muttaqeen and he gave us the description of the things in case if you done them, you will be from the muttaqeen. Then he told you, the one who rejects this criteria is a kafir, simply. The concept, now, you know, yuqimuna salah, yu'minuna, number, number one, yu'minuna, bil ghaib, yuqimun, يؤتون بالآخرة and we highlighted every single point and how important every one of them to believe in the unseen and to believe in the آخرة it's basic by the way wherever you go when Allah is praising believers in 99% of the places where Allah is praising believers the main thing that is connected to the fact that they are on the status of Iman, it's connected with وَبِالْأَخِرَةِ هُمْ يُقِنُوا وَيُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْأَخِرَةِ وَبِالْأَخِرَةِ بِالْأَخِرَةِ You know why? Why it's important? Because we are in a simple part of the story, by the way, as we say. Now we are living, because we believe, we believe in the following as Muslims, as believers. We believe that Allah created us, Allah knows when. Our souls, we have no idea. Millions, trillions, thousands of years, we have no idea. The soul. Now, our real started conscious point when we are born in this worldly life, which could be 10 years, 20, 25, 30, 30, 50, whatever, okay? Type. Let's imagine that I lived 60 years, you lived 40, he lived 70. This is very simple part of the, the eternal life because we believe that your soul was created, Allah knows when, this was injected in the womb of your mother while you are still a small, you know, a piece of flesh. Then you came to this earth, which is the date of your birth, up to your death, the average, let's say, 50, 60 years. Then we believe in what we call Alam al Barzakh. The Barzakh means the barrier. Souls will be kept there for a time, Allah who knows when. And the people of Pharaoh. And the people of Musa at that time, they are in Alam al-Barzakh since about 4,000, 3,500 years. Okay, there. Then we believe in resurrection and congregation, al-Ba'ath wa nushur Accountability, day of judgment. The day of judgment, the basic element in it, the accountability, al-Hisab. Then the eternal destination, Jannah or not eternally. So be careful. When we speak about this worldly life, we are talking about one point of, out of infinity. Endless. It's eternal. So you need to know. So bil akhira, it means it's like you, you've been asked, would you like to be a multi-billionaire? Wow, yes. Would you like to live 1,000 years on this life? Wow, yes. Would you like to have, for example, islands and cars and money? Yes. Would you like to live all of the 1,000 years without having any kind of illness, sickness, a problem, any, any, yes. Would you like, yes, 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 yes. Okay, we want you to come to a training course just for 10 days. In these 10 days, you will not enjoy any kind of uh, games, any kind of social media, and you have to train very hard. Ten days, ya ammi, and I'm mustaid just to, be, to, 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 to kill myself five times a day for the ten days, if I can do it. If I want to enjoy 1,000 years. <laughs> what about eternal life? 
So this is what we did in the very beginning of Surah Al -al 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 Sorry, Bil Akhiratum Yuqinun, under the title of Allahumma Salla Ala Sayyidina Muhammad to summon them Al Muttaqin. Yes, okay. Then the other classification. Then Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala highlighted the most wicked group among the rejecters and non-believers. Who are they? Munafiqin. إن المنافقين كانوا في الدرك الأسفل من النار. منافقون and كفار. Both of them they are كفار. They are non-believers. Yes. Both of them they are rejecters. But منافقين they have more and extra punishment because they claim on the surface what they have, which is horrible. And by the way, نفاق is one of the worst diseases among the society. When you have someone claims that he is like you, he claims that he loves you, he claims he liked with you, but his heart is with your enemy against you. This is the worst. This is the worst. Anyway, type. Then we move to another point, which is. Pretentious. Pretentious. Pretension. Pretension. Jazakum Allah khair. Barakallah fiqo. Okay? You know, sometimes you, you, you have, uh, you know, in the daily slang language, words you can't translate. Outdo? Outdo? To outdo. Do you mean the Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> أنا بعطي مثال على كلمات التي لا يمكن ترجمتها. طبعاً كل واحد بلغته عنده كلمة. Everyone has in his own language أو لهجة. Okay؟ باللهجة الأردنية في كلمة لا يمكن تترجم وهي جبعت. تعرف جبعت؟ الصوت تبعها لما أقول لك فلان جبعت معه. والله لو جبت لي فرنسي على إنجليزي على روسي على كذا خلطته ببعض لا يمكن ترجم جبعت. هل بقدر ترجمه؟ Can you translate? ايش؟ شوف انت شوف كيف شفت جبعت لاست لا في عندك شيء بسموا الجرس الموسيقي الصوت اه باي ذا واي ام نوت جوكينج باي ذا واي بارت اوف ذا اميزنج اسبكت اوف ذا قران وات وي كول الجرس الصوتي اوكي سم بيبل ذي كول ات جرس الموسيقي حتى بعض الناس موسيقي لا بالمعنى اللغوي يعني مينز ذا ساوند ات سيلف It goes in parallel with the meaning that you are imagining. والعاديات ضبحا. مين العاديات؟ Horses. والعاديات ضبحا. فالموريات قدحا. You know when they have the fraction with the stones and have this kind of like special lights. وفالموريات قدحا فالمغيرات صبحا فأثرنا به نقعا فوسطنا به جمعا You know, while you are imagining the horse in the battle attacking the sound it will not be like والضحا والليل إذا سجا ما ودعك ربك وما قال Yes, the sound, it's part of the amazing powerful aspect of Arabic language, it is والله أعلم. طبعا this is by itself it's 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 another story. anyway, sorry. I was talking about the آخر. I mean the example that we use. anyone anyone is facing a ظالم or he missed his rights or someone is bullying him or taking his rights and for whatever reason politically socially whatever you are not able to take back your right for whatever reason. okay. always remind yourself that this is a very simple part of the film. And the story has not been finished yet. <laughs> That's why the great ulama, the great believers in the history, when some dictator, you know, people, the dictators of the, the history, whatever, always we had them, all nations. Uh, one of them, or some of them, they used to say, Al Mawidu Bainana Al Maqabar or Al Dafan. You know, we will meet when we go to the grave, which means we will meet in the. <laughs> Al-Akhirah. We will meet you. Okay, don't worry. Okay, you have the power now, physical power. You can't torture me. You can't hurt me. You can't take my money. You can, you know, 
spread, you know, bad, corrupted things against me, I'm not able to do anything. You are a state, I'm just a person. You have the media. Yes, you have the power, but you are not powerful than Allah. If there's death, you and me will go to this grave and we will stand before Allah. You will see what will happen to you. That's why you need to believe in Allah, the one who does not die. Let أَخُدُهُ سِنَةٌ Well, I know Allah does not sleep. Allah does not have not even a nap, not even laziness, not even tired, nothing. لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى That's why anyone who accuses Allah that he's like any aspect of human being, he's insulting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we are all have our weakness, defect points, okay? Type. After that, I'm trying to... Inshallah, by the way, we finished just five, uh, seven, seven, seven sessions. Tayyib. Then, inshallah. Okay. We came to Qawlillah Ta'ala. Ya ayyuhal nasu abudu. Rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum walladhina min qablikum la'allakum. Tattaqoon. If you remember what was the most important question in this ayah. Who remembers? What was? Ya ayyuhal nasu. أُعْبُدُوا رَبَّكُمْ What was the question? Yes, Jude. Uh, how he is asking Muslims to, to worship Allah. Yes. It, it's, it's, you know, it's a little bit strange. How come Allah is commanding non-believers to worship Him? How come He is addressing them directly? طب believer وآمنا بالله. طب non-believer. If you remember, one of the things, justification I gave to you. We as Muslims believe that Allah, when He created us, he created within us what we call the inner nature, al-fitra, okay? The instinct, which contains the basic laws of realizing of many things, which contains how you think, how you feel, how you think the basics. Depending on that basics, I give you an example if you remember. Simple example. I said if you are walking, you came to the border of a country. You have a general idea, just there is a country. There is a warning on, you don't know anything about behind this border. However, there is a sign, it reads, the sign. Be careful, don't, should we call transpass? Don't cross. Trespass? Trespass? khair. Don't trespass this point. Just a piece of sign, someone written. Logically. Do you have to consider this or not? Imagine it says, if you trespass this, a horrible thing will happen to you. If you have the minimum of logical thinking, can you simply say, Can you claim this? Okay. By the way, if you are a man of intellect, can you simply just say, Don't waste your time. Go ahead, twakala Allah. Walaki ammi balki, there is a shusma uh, mines field. Hakal al gham. Don't trespass. At least if you are someone with intellect, power of intellect, what you should do? Don't cross. Okay, imagine that you are doubting the validity or the authenticity of that. Imagine the fact that you are doubting, khalas, you just carry on. You do what? You check. You make a telephone call. You try to throw a stone if there is a, you know, any kind of bombs. You try to check someone around you. You do something, you check, you simply, my point, do you just ignore it? This is the core point. Allah says, No, no, no. There is, there is a possibility of a great, powerful God is threatening you. Ya give it 50% of doubt. 50, not, not, not 60, just 50. Try to consider, if you are sure that this is a pure lie, Ya Ammi, twakkal ala Allah. Ruh, do. But can you be sure 100% that this is a lie? Don't ever dare to say, oh, I, uh, I, how can I know? Okay, check. Because how can I know? I don't think so. I will throw it. Nah, Habibi. No, 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 you are just simply killing yourself. You are committing suicide now. But committing suicide in this daily, uh, worldly life is so simple. <laughs> I mean, the problem, you are suiciding your akhirah. <laughs> you are destructing, destroying your akhirah. On this base, Allah is addressing. 
Rabbakum. Allah is challenging. He's calling. From one angle, he's calling. Consider. If you have some arrogance, he's challenging you. <laughs> Be careful. Someone is threatening you. Imagine the other example. Imagine that you, all of you now. Now, imagine that you have no idea whether I'm joking or saying seriously. I'm not laughing. I told you, please be careful. Don't leave this hole because someone behind the door is holding a machine gun and he is willing to kill any of you if you leave this hole. Imagine that I'm seriously telling you this. I'm not laughing on something. And it's not part of my character to joke. I don't, be careful, don't. Please don't. There is a possibility that I'm joking. Yes. There is a possibility just I'm a drunk. I don't drink the except water, alhamdulillah. Okay. But okay, okay, okay. There is just the benefit of doubts that really I know information. I discovered them and I'm not able to say more than that because they are threatening me that they will kill my daughter or my son if I said more than that. Now you need to do what? You need to check. Regardless how, it's not my point. You can call someone from outside to come at the end to check if there's a car, as I'm claiming. Just, just check it, okay? On this base, you need to do this. Ya ayyuhal nasu abudu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum alladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqun. Then, then, we, I have two points and I will finish. Qissat Adam and the children of Israel. <laughs> then, we will stop, inshallah, highlighting. The story of Adam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at the first few pages, he highlighted the story of Adam. وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفًا قَالُوا أَتَجْعَلُ فِيهَا مَنْ يُفْسِدُ فِيهَا وَيَسْفِكُ الدِّمَاءَ وَنَحْنُ نُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِكَ وَنُقَدِّسُ لَكَ قَالَ إِنِّي أَعْلَمُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا If you remember the most important point, now, Story of Adam is mentioned in different surahs, seven or nine times, I forgot. It's either seven or nine, okay? So in each surah, some aspects are added from the full story. If you remember, I did cover most or all of the places and we brought the meanings and we highlighted them in two or three sessions. The most important thing you need to know, the doubt of misconception, misunderstanding that if Allah created Adam for the sake of sending him to earth, how come we say he was punished by sending him to earth? <laughs> he was created from the very beginning to be on earth. Do you remember? Because some people, they have, to, to, how come he was punished? But he was created to go there. in the fil ardi. Do you remember? We said many things. One of the good, nice, beautiful, easy, simple ways to understanding, Adam by being sent to earth was not punished. However, he was created, then he had a training course in a safe environment to discover his abilities, capabilities, his enemy, when he had a good idea, go continue your mission. <laughs> Just in this simple way, I repeat, Adam was kept for a while in a safe environment. It's like when you want to send your child, for example, to play in a, some kind of dangerous, let's say, game. You give him training, let's say, for course, in a safe area like when you want to do for example skating on the ice they give you this special plastic piece that you keep you know using just to make sure or maybe they give you special clothes in case if you something safe okay have you realized how dangerous it is how you realized what does it mean to have high speed in skating you could break your arm you could kill someone maybe by pushing him if you are on high speed and you pushed someone for a few meters and he was dropped, maybe he, in his head he will lose his life. So it's not, an, it's nice, but it's, it is dangerous. Okay, let's have some kind of, now, have an idea about what you are might be facing. This is like to sum up the whole story, okay? And if you remember, one of the most important we highlighted, 
when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala قال يا بني آدم طبعا ينزع عنهما لباسهما مين ذكرني بداية الآية بدايتها يا بني ينزع عنهما لباسهما ليريهما من سوءاتهما بدايتها يا بني آدم لا يفتننكم يا بني آدم لا يفتننك لا يفتننكم الشيطان كما أخرج أبويكم من الجنة ينزع عنهما لباسهما ليريهما من سوءاتهما. Do you remember? We highlighted that many of us, because of the Judeo-Christian influence in the cartoons when we were kids. They always portrayed Adam and Eve when they were created as fully naked, which was not the case. They were created with special clothes. يَنْزِعُ عَنْهُمَا لِبَاسَهُمَا So they were covered with special clothes. When they committed the mistake, they were able to see their private parts that are sawa. So look how important to Allah covering the sawah. So Allah, Allah is not playing games with us. He's not wasting the time. When he is talking about the most important sensitive point in the history of humanity, the creation of our father, he was talking about the importance of covering your body with the clothes. To know, to know the importance and to realize how dangerous uncovering many parts of your body. Just to see the message, if you are a believer. It's not a joke. It's not a personal choice. It's not, ya ammi, it's a cultural you know, development. When people, this is what the people think. No, 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 no. You, as a Muslim, you need to know what your God is asking you, not what the people think. That's why it's very, very important to reconsider this concept. After that, we started with the children of Israel. And by this, I finish. I... Now, since I think maybe 10 sessions, 12 sessions, we are in the process of covering, we came to the children of Israel. We told you the following now. Allah in this final book with the seal of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, out of 120, 4,000 prophets, 315 messengers, the last one was Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We believe that we were preceded with Thousands of prophets and messengers plus millions of believers <laughs> and millions of non believers. Allah decided by His final book, the seal of the books, to give us lessons from the previous believers. He decided by His wisdom to choose many people because He spoke about Qawm Salih, Ad, Thamud, Lut, many. But now at the very beginning, for a hikmah, for a wisdom, he is aware of subhanahu wa ta'ala he focused some stories from the stories of the children of Israel now they are one of the closest to us we belong to the same school we believe in the same God and they had a very very intensive experience that we can learn from the ups and downs historically not Quranically according to the history it is claimed that Musa salam was before 3,400 years from now, according to the Torah, not the Quran. If we accepted this, so they, they came before us, they preceded us with 2,000 years. So an experience of a believers with ups, downs, ups, downs, ups, downs of 2,000 years. Allah decided to give us in Surat Al-Baqarah alone, at the first third of Surat Al-Baqarah, 25 lessons <laughs> for the children of Israel. We covered about 10 or 12 of them. One of the most lessons, the Shabbat story. Do you remember it? Fishing. Fishing. The people who were next to the sea and they were trying to play games with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa la billah. How Allah punished them. And many other stories and still, still we are in the process of taking lessons because we are all belonging to the same school, the school of believing in one God, that we are created to worship God with the general of meaning morning and we will meet our Lord in the day of judgment. So let's take lessons as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is advising us or otherwise what they have faced we will face individual level, 
سمول جروب ليفل نيشن ليفل والله سبحانه وتعالى سيد كليرلي وان تتولوا يستبدل قوما غيركم اف يو ديسايد سيمبلي تو فورسيك تو ليف تو اغنور وي ويل ريبلاس يو دونت ثينك ذات الله از ديبندينغ اون يو اند مي صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا اي هوب ذات اي ريفريشت يور ميموري ويز ذا لاست 32 سيشنز ان صلاه وذ ذا موست امبورتنت بوينتس ذات وي هاف هايلايتد نيكست تيوزدي وي دونت هاف ا سيشن اوكي Uh, after Ramadan, let me tell you, here in Ramadan, alhamdulillah, every day, as you know, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, we have the tarawih. And every day, we have a special maw'idah, or a special khatira, or very short lesson, in Arabic and in English, after the fourth rak'ah and the eighth rak'ah. So please, you are all يعني, welcome, inshallah, to be with us. Every day, we'll have Arabic, English, Arabic, English. So uh, whether you know just Arabic or you know just English, alhamdulillah, We are able, inshallah, to provide some kind of beautiful, not, not just my, you know, I and Sheikh uh, Mohandas Yasser Al-Baz, uh, Brother Sheikh Abdul Aziz, Brother uh, Sheikh Ihab Mustafa, Brother Firas Mraish. We have, alhamdulillah, a big group of, inshallah, speakers. And wa'a wazzakum Allah khair. Barakallah fikum. If you have any comments or simple to highlight something, we have just three to four minutes and we have to finish to raise the adhan because, inshallah, the iqamah in 10 minutes. Any points you would like to raise or to, not to ask, because not, I, I can't answer any questions now, because we have very limited time. If you want to highlight any comments, fadl. Anything? Zakumullah khair. See you, inshallah, after Ramadan, bi'idhin mawla azza wa jal. Please, if you are interested to know in details, when, what, if you did any change, Shihab, please can you raise up your hand? Register, register with the WhatsApp group with Brother Shihab. This is Brother Shihab Khan, jazallah khairat. He's in charge of telling you of any kind of changes, okay? Assalamu alaikum.